Hello everyone, this is John Ward with Appalachian Channel and I'm here with another country store. We're at Dunnikin's uh, Grocery and Supply in Mill Springs, Kentucky. And we're gonna go in and meet the owner and her son, Eddie, and he's gonna tell us about uh, growing up in this area as a kid, uh, coming here when he was a kid, remembering having uh, to walk a mile over here to get uh, a Coke or a pop or a candy or whatever. He's got some great memories. And we're gonna go inside and check this store out that was first started across the street over here in the late 1800s. Come on in, let's take a look. Springs, Kentucky. Pleasure to meet you, Eddie's wife. Uh, this building is 133 years old. 133 years old. How about that? That's amazing. Built in 1890, sat across the road until 1935 or 36 when the Dunnigans bought it. And they moved it over here using a mule and some logs. Uh, and it took them two days to move it over here. And then they turned it 90 degrees. It took them a week to do that with four teams of mules. And they turned it so these doors go run east and west. If you look at the picture up here, the second picture, that's April 2002. That's the day Mr. Dunnigan auctioned the place off. It closed down in the fall, auctioned the whole place off. Everybody bought everything. The counter that sat right there was uh, uh, bought by the gentleman that runs McCutcheon's Antiques. He sits behind it now. They bought the doors off the walls. They bought everything and anything out of here because it had been here so long and people, had, when it was the post office, everybody came by once a week. But it used to be surrounded by all those trees and when the new ladies bought it, when the Simpson ladies bought it in 02, they had to cut down the trees to fix the roof. So it lost all its shade. So sometimes it's a bit tepid in this old building. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking, you, what year did you come in here? Uh, Mom bought the building in August of 2019 she spent a, about a year and a half mothering me to come up and cook and so i've been cooking a little bit over two years so your mother does she work here too with you or she just no sir but you do it huh yes sir well she's she's enjoys getting out of the way ladies first and i'll have the uh pork barbecue stuffed potato you want pickles onions jalapenos on it no you can put jalapenos on the side though Okay, but no pickles and onions. Okay, you're good with butter, cheese, on sour cream? Okay. What about you boys? I think I'll have the pork, the pulled pork sandwich and some, uh, I think a little thing of coleslaw with that. Yes, sir. And a uh, little thing of potato salt. We'll try that. No sweat. Do you want any pickles, onions, jalapenos on your, potato, on uh, your pork sandwich? Uh, some uh, pickles on the side and uh, be fine. Just. Uh, Woo. Everywhere in Texas that serves barbecue serves a stuffed potato. All right. So I do this because much like where I first had one at the Astrodome, it was bigger than both my fists and you had to actually hold it in a little nacho cup and hope to not spill it. But in and of itself, it's its own little endeavor but it will be, the word plentiful would be an understatement. Oh. So tell us a little bit more about the upstairs. You, so the using... upstairs initially served as a lodge, then it was a residence, and then it was, when the Dunnigans brought it and moved it over here, it was more storage. So, but Mr. Dunnigan, Everett also processed his hams upstairs. So this big field next to us, right? When it was first done, when the Dunnigans took over, he raised hogs out there, okay? And so he would make his own hams. So that's where he processed them. And so 
none of us would have been allowed upstairs had you not been had you not been helping him tote something up the stairs. Just because that was a, the building had to be secured. It was a post office, so that's why there's bars on the windows. Right, so it being the post office had to be secured. That's why the, they were never open on Sunday. And after the Simpson ladies bought it, they had the gentleman that used to be the miller across the way at Mill Springs, Mill, they had him put the water in. So there was no water in this building until 2002. No toilets, no sinks, no nothing. When they auctioned it off, they donated the uh, mailboxes. The sorting area is now down in the museum down in uh, Monticello. Okay. If you go into that museum, you'll go in. There's a replica of the stagecoach that used to run from the Burnside to Monticello. And then the mail post office boxes. And it's still labeled in, his hand, in Mr. Dunnigan's handwriting. And so... Because it was all general delivery, it would show up and you didn't mail stuff to addresses. You mailed it to Mill Springs, Kentucky. It got here and he sorted it out and gave it to who it was. So my last name being Zablocki, I'd come up from Texas. Well, I'm one of the Boston grandchildren, so he just put it in with all the Boston stuff. And so when it came time to get the mail, I'd get whatever was mine. But there was no box number three or a security box or anything like that. It was no not like the way the post office runs now. But for years, you know, so until the sometime in the mid 90s, you had to come here and fetch your mail. There was no stick service. They didn't take it door to door. You had to come you had to come and get your mail while you were here. And so once a week most people would come and that's what they do. Come pick up their mail and they're done cooler because of the breeze and guys would come in here like today where it's 90 degrees outside well they'd come in here and sit next to a fan in the dark and have a pop and a Everett would make he had a uh, made cold sandwiches so there was an actual little deli section where you get a most of the people ordered bologna on a big cracker with hot sauce or something along those lines but you come in here, and I think I, I think when I was a little boy, I was paying. I think it was forty-five or fifty cents for a bologna sandwich. So now you you grew up in the area. I spent every summer here until I was about seventeen. Okay. Sixteen, seventeen, and then I come back in ninety, and then I moved back up three and a half, four years ago. Okay. But my family, mom, my family is mom's one of thirteen children. I'm one of the grandchildren and so we're all still alive and so all the grandchildren are essentially grandparents we still get together every Sunday dinner Sunday for dinner well how about so, that so that's interesting so you remember it when it's just a regular general store as a kid then when I was a little kid we would beg please take us to the store please take us to the store and next over next to the post office boxes there was the there was a candy display and then there were two coolers. One was a pull top and one was a slide top. And as a little kid, you know, you get over there and you've got to, you can't, you slide it back, you can't see. So you hold yourself up and you look and then you drop back down and you fish around and hope you grab the one that you wanted. <laughs> Although, amazingly how frequently it was always an upper 10. But we'd beg or we'd walk. Once we got a little bit bigger and more rambunctious shall we say because being free range children we'd walk across the we'd rock, walk across the six farms up here but we'd fish our way up here so we'd have little fish we'd have our fishing poles and stuff and we'd pond to pond to pond to pond get up here there wasn't a returnable bottle that I know of between here and my grandmother's house and you'd come up here get a pop and a candy bar or ice cream then you fish your way back or we'd be over, go over to the park and chase crawfish and go fish in the lake. Being little kids and free range, you got you had more fun. You got away with more. Yeah. One of the Dunnigan boys was in here a couple of weeks ago. Well, a couple of months ago, and we were talking. See the 
the actual ledgers for this store are down in the are down in the museum too. So some of the stuff, like before the Dunnigans owned it, it was actually uh, you could during the three year, two or three years where prohibition, right after prohibition had been repealed and Wayne County was wet, you could actually get a. And this is your loaded baked potato, pork potato, jalapenos on the side, no pickles, no onions. That looks really good. All mm -hmm. right. Then we have they. Uh, it was cheaper in here to buy a beer than it was to buy, then this is ditto. Two pork sandwiches, pickles on the side, potato salad and coleslaw, silverware's there, or cutlery's there. This is the regular barbecue sauce. We also have the mustard, the hot, and the garlic. Hot and garlic, salt, pepper, toothpicks, and the pick of pepper is similar to A1 in Worcestershire, but with a, it's got a the peppers they use that they dry out to jerk stuff in Jamaica are the peppers they use to season that. Now, do you make the, some of this stuff here? Do all you make of some this, of it? All of this stuff starts off as sweet baby rays, and then I play with it. So the regular has nine extra things added to it. Then you take the regular. The mustard has six extra things added to it. The garlic has four extra things added to it, and the hot has six extra things added to it. Now, is this something you pay? You say you lived in Texas for a while? Yes, sir. Did I was. I, Pretty much raised in Texas. Did you do barbecue here. down there too, or no? I wouldn't. Lord, no. No, <laughs> you, you said no, I just cook. I just bartended and cooked and waited tables and like to eat and play outside. Sweetie, are we gonna have dessert? Yeah, we're gonna have. There was also a time. See this, uh, because this building was the post office. Dwayne and I, Dwayne and I were talking Dunnigan when he was a boy. They wanted, you know, they spent enough time here. They didn't want anything to do with being in the store or anything like that. They had been in it enough. So there was a time where, as far as I know, this building was broken into twice ever. It was broken into on consecutive nights. And the solution was the sheriff sat here in a chair the next night and never got broken into again. But, you know, that's how stuff got settled. So tell people how they can find you if they're traveling down uh, 120, uh, uh, 27, Highway 27. We are on the way to Conley Bottom off 1275 or off Old Mill Springs Road. Either one, depending on which way you're coming from, gets you here. And it'll be in the middle of a triangle. The building's been here since 1936. And so it's a lot of people have, because of the, where it's located, haven't, uh, it's on the wrong side of the road for anybody going to Conley Bottom. You always want to make right turns. It's like a gas station should be on the right side, not the left, because nobody wants to cross over. But you come down towards Conley Bottom, and we're on the, uh, we're in the middle right over the first couple of lumps, about two miles before you get to, uh, Conley Bottom. Across from the Mill Springs Mill. They, I'm sorry, sir. Well, sir, part of this this whole area would have been part of the part of a battlefield, but the actual battlefield museum is on the other side of the river, on the other side of the lake, over in Nancy. So the two, there are two of the ten stops on the historical tour. And they are the Brown Lanier House across the way and the West Metcalf House. And then the other eight, or the, the first eight, are all on the other side of the river, slash lake. I catch myself frequently referring to it as a river since... And that's uh, the Cumberland, uh, Cumberland, right? Lake Cumberland, yes. Lake Cumberland. So because Wayne County and Mill Springs are actually divided by the lake. My name's Carolyn Boston Spear. I was born here about a mile from this place and I used to come here years ago as a little kid and walk up the hill here to the schoolhouse. 
and Everett Dunnigan was the owner at the time. And I think he opened this place in 1947 when he came back from the uh, war. And his dad had run it before him. What uh, came about that you ended up uh, buying the store, this building? Well, um, the original owner went out of business and because of his age and health issues. And then his, um, he sold it to a lady and her mother, and they ran it for two or three years, sort of as an ice cream shop. And uh, then when they sold it and I, my husband died, I was living in Houston. I moved here and I bought the store and then I bought his house, which is just up the hill where the old schoolhouse used to be. And in the house up there, the um, basement still has the blackboards from the school on the wall. So I went to school in the house that I now live in. Well, so they had, there was a schoolhouse or a house and a school it back was then? A, a schoolhouse. My then. mother and dad had gone there and took through the eighth grade when they were young, which would have made it about 1920s sometime. Okay. Well, how about that? You're living in the house you went to school in. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's neat. Yes, Everett Dunnigan here, we called him, I called him the banker because most of the people raised crops and tobacco was big in this area at the time. So they would generally grow tobacco and sell it in the fall and then come in and pay all their bills. So he carried them on the books until they paid their bills. Right, absolutely. How about that? Yeah. So. Yeah, your Eddie was telling us a little bit about coming here in the summers uh, when he was in, I guess, in high school and when he was a little boy, he would come and I would leave him for three months because I was still working in Houston, and he'd stay with my mother, which is about a mile from here on the farm, which we still have, and uh, they were roamed around like a bunch of little Indians <laughs> up in the mountains. He called it being free range. Uh -huh. Yeah, he had a lot of cousins here, and he was an only child, and most of them were only child yeah. children. So then they, they grew up like brothers and sisters, and they're still close. We have Sunday lunches out at the farm every Sunday, and we probably have anywhere from 20 to 75 people attend, and it's all family usually. We're, we're going to walk upstairs and see what it looks like up here. He says it's... Uh, Accessible, so let's look at it. Oh, they got a bathroom up here. Oh, wow, this is neat. Guess the original store owners when this was built, uh, like most store owners back in the day, they lived in the uh, the store. So most of the time it was upstairs and that's what we're seeing here. So this is neat to see that it's uh, being uh, fixed up and used or used as a museum type setup here. Let's check out the other rooms. Two big rooms upstairs and apparently they probably cooked everything downstairs. No kitchens up here, but it does have a bathroom. I don't think it would originally had a bathroom in the 1800s up here, but uh, they put one in. Pretty neat. Well, for instance, these are old Monticello bank checks. And without even looking at the date, you can see how old they are because they're they're the old punch stamps as paid, but these are made out to Dunnigan store, right? Dunnigan store, Dunnigan store. This is my great uncle and my great aunt. But these are all, for instance, this is 180 93 for fertilizer. And I can't tell what that word is because my penmanship doesn't read that way. 
But then here's Nettie buying eight dollars worth of peaches in 1958. You know, back when you actually, when people actually wrote checks, and when you put it in the note, it, you put in the note so you knew exactly what it was. And then I found this, or at least this part. I don't know what happened to the other part, but this is the Gainsborough Telephone Company. It was underneath a shelf, and it's a telephone bill from 1902 for two dollars. So I don't know if that was an annual thing, if that was an annual price or a monthly, but this is what the building looked like. There's no date on it, but you can see how it used to appear. All right, so some of the stuff, once I pulled up the shelves off the floor to seal the walls, you find stuff. I found 22 boxes of shoe tacks, which used to be used to repair or make shoes to hold the leather soles on the bottom. And I'm assuming that a case had 24 because I can't think of why you'd buy uh, 22 is an odd number. Nothing gets shipped in 11s. Nothing gets shipped in 22s. You know, they come in different numbers. So two dozen boxes. But each one was 100 tacks, about two by two, three by three box. But all the tacks had rusted together. And when you try to open it, the box is disintegrated. And then I found this, which is actually a box of sample floor tiles textured mosaic floor tiles so you come in when you're redoing your house and pick out the ones and this is our best brand new fire resistant vinyl asbestos tile <laughs> so at one time that was you know asbestos was a key fire deterrent but until they found out that'll kill you if it gets broken or ground up. And then you have something like that, who, if you're old enough to remember getting to swallow this, you remember it without a doubt. Oh, don't, uh, have, you, have you tried any of it out? I have not taken a sip. <laughs> I am, I'm a brave man and I've drank a lot of stuff, but I'm not willing to do that. And then you find old photos like this. So this was January 22nd, 2000. And the store was open that day, covered in snow. But if you look, like I was telling you, there's the milk truck that he used to run food out to the farms when people were people were harvesting because they couldn't come here. He probably delivered some groceries and stuff too while he was out there sometimes. I, I would have no doubt that he would because there were people that couldn't get around or if they could, they couldn't, or they needed it and couldn't get out and got sick. I was talking to his sons and just the whole thought of, you know, how many times the parents are here, but the kids have moved away, the parents pass away. There's no telling how much he lost over the years by an account not being closed because someone passed away and the, the survivors didn't know that there was an account that needed to be handled or how many times Dwayne told me about, he'd just tell them to give it to them and let them have it yeah. and stuff like that. But when it was a general store, there was a counter here and this one was the one where they kept all the sewing equipment. So there are bolts of cloth and shoes and, you know, all that stuff. Mom talks about the, you know, if they ordered anything, it came through here. Any of the mail order stuff came through this building locally. So you got your one pair of shoes, they'd come here or they'd come from here. Or you'd get your dress or whatever would come from here. She'd come granny buy the fabric here and sew it at the house. You see these old, this old picture so this is a, this old collage of this building this is mr dunning it that's everett here we'll take it down and cut okay. out the glare but that's mr dunnigan and then you see all the different types how it looked back when it looked different photos and i mean thrasher did a lot of thrasher did different versions of this bunch of artists have done different versions come painted i've had guys i have amateur artists come by and they want to try and or and i let anybody take a picture or you know they've got different reasons to do it but like so there's your post office boxes so the way it was separated and that's all down in the museum you know here again here's that milk truck i was talking about and how it was still sinking down in but some of the neat little old stuff you'd sit here and you come in here and it was nice and cool and the breeze would blow. But he was here for a long time. So tell me about these uh, stools. Where'd you come by these stools that I like these old? Uh... These stools, the uh, Simpson ladies put in. Okay. And so the best thing about these stools is much like children, even adults, 
like to spin, but they're loosened up a little bit so they spin and make more noise. And every pair of parent, every parent that comes in when as soon as a kid touches it, sees that it moves, they spin it. And they all say, stop, don't, 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 don't. And kids are gonna be kids, they wanna spin it, but I've got a bunch of little breakable stuff sitting right there at four year old height to grab, but it's also at height to see. And so I'd rather them spin this than grab, <laughs> than play with the glass. One of, one of the things that people like to hear, you know one of the things they like to hear the no, most sir. in some of my videos? Uh -uh. Is the screen door slamming when it shuts. Oh yeah, I mom got mad because I, oiled the hinges <laughs> but it's you know when it's a nice day when it's a nice day you can open the whole place up and when it opens up you know the breeze here being either predominantly east or west you know it'll blow through real nice nice enough but these old doors you hear them they don't squeak because mainly i it draw the sound of a squeaking door bothers me but you replaced these doors these are not the original that was here no, but these, these are the doors but this door or these doors are original though right yes sir so one of the things i always like to look at is the uh, the handles and how they open to see how this opens on the back side well, let me show you real quick first okay. of all you got to realize that's a nail holding that in place so at some point the part that held that in fell out and they just replaced it with a nail with a nail okay, okay. now here's the fun one all right this door has been here forever and the best is that more people are baffled on how to get yeah. out yeah. because they look at it they think they want to that you turn this which is a locking mechanism instead of just the lift so legitimately 30 40 percent of the people that come out of here you just gotta you've got to tell them to reach lower and lift well, I noticed that with one of the local guys that came in just a little while ago. He was trying to get out. And he says, I'm here all the time, and I still couldn't have an, he couldn't remember exactly. how to get out. So when you close her up, right, it goes through. This is the, that's the, the door. Right. But everybody wants to grab that thinking it's a knob, and it's a lock. And this was one of, one of the original screen doors. That's that was originally one of the doors that they auctioned off in O2, in O2 and it's back from Morrison Faye and Vicki and Ray but that was one they paid I don't know what they paid for it mom was here when they brought it in and gave it back to them you gave it back to the store to put on display how about that and then you got an old picture so this is what this porch out here looked like and so that's Mr. Dunnigan leaning there that's my uncle Dan who was in here earlier sitting on a couple of bags of salt and then you got Howard Lee Ramsey and you got Jack Roberts and so those they'd all been they'd sit there does that have a date on the back of that it looks like maybe early 70s possibly it was, well in this picture he's 30 something so it's 30 years ago because he's 66. Ago. okay so it's sometime in the late 80s early uh, 90s okay looked a little older than that because i did it in black and white oh yeah but see you've got these guys and right so ever done again owned the place dan's the youngest of 13 so he grew up coming here Jack Roberts owns the land across the street, still lives there. His nephew lives across the street and they still farm. And then the other one is Howard Lee Ramsey and he lives right over here. So let's look out the back door here a minute, Eddie. I was noticing there's a corn growing right out the back here now. This is across the land, across the lane is Jack Roberts farm. And Miss Roberts is one of the gentlemen in that last picture. So he grows, he grows a little garden here and they actually sell tomatoes and vegetables and stuff over off a cart. It's all honor. You pull, you know, you go in and you, you stop by, get what you want. You leave your money in the bucket and you, they got the prices. It's all, ain't nobody monitoring it. You just come get what you want, leave the money. Yep. You just don't see that no more. And then you see something like this, old tape measure. Just little weird, you'll just find all kinds of little goofy stuff. So people coming to visit you, right here's the meal where I'm learning, right, the, right here. So, so parking lot, so where that flag is, it's in the middle of the parking area at the Mill Springs Mill. Down lower, if you go down 200 yards, that'll get you to the gift shop. Another 100 yards down the hill is the mill, and then it's 107 steps from the mill down to the dock. And so you can dock a boat there, walk all the way up and get to here. But they find these old pictures, like this is a photo, this photo is, they date it, the date on it of the actual photo is sometime between 1910 and 1920. 
But this is a photo of this building before it got moved across the street, before it got moved to its present location. Mm -hmm. But some of it's just, you look around, I find stuff still. Uh, the cute thing is I'll find where Daryl or Dwayne have written their name. The boys, Mr. Dunnigan's sons, where when they were kids, they wrote their name on a something or somewhere, find a piece of wood with it. But I, it's, you know, it's pretty impressive that it's still here. It's kind of neat. Some of it, I've like these old light fixtures, the bulbs, right? I've pulled, uh, I've probably pulled a mile of the old style electric wire out of this building or where it was on the walls where it's run to connect stuff just out of the fact and it's old wax, paper wax covered wires that you wouldn't dare to turn on because you don't know where it goes or where it leads. Uh, there's actually, this building has an alarm and so it was secured so the alarm would go off every now and then and the Dunnigans lived up here but you could hear it because it actually when it goes off sounds not like it sounds more like a tornado alarm that it like it sounds like a weather alarm and it's actually just the alarm for the house for the building so this is loud but it's cute so if the alarm went off so when the alarm went off that was the alarm going off but to me it sounds like what would have been a tornado warning or something like that you know what i mean it's right. not it doesn't sound like uh someone broke in alarm <laughs> but things were done in a different manner back then listening to the stories of people tell you is more entertaining than I've got a lot to say, but I, I like hearing the stories of the other guys. You get some of these old guys around, and, you know, they've been coming here their whole lives. They, 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 didn't, they don't remember not ever coming here, yeah. you know, because it used to be this is where they come to get stuff. Like, like, essentially, my Uncle Carl, he'll come in, he'll tell you stories, because when the chimney was in, initially what it was was, so there was... When I was a little boy back in the 70s, there's a stove that sat here. And it was a wood burning stove. Okay, so the wood burning stove sat here, round, and there was a stool that wasn't fastened to the ground. So imagine this mobile. And so it was more of a balancing act. It would have had a smaller base than this, but you'd sit there and sit on that stool and it'd sit there, but it wasn't fastened to anything. And you couldn't have something like that now because Next thing you know, much like hot coffee burning somebody because they didn't know it was hot, well, that's a stool that moves and you don't know enough that it might fall. But after the wood burning stove, then they put in a coal register stove, which is the one with the auger that turns and so you'd load it up with coal and it would burn that. So it looks like you got gas maybe running in there now. This one's gas now. This runs gas, that and the split. The split does a heck of a job, but the gas gas like any other time just at any other house it works faster and better yes it's just there's something easier about turning a pressing a button than playing with all that and then you find some of the old stuff so the way ever it used to clean the floor is with this stuff so this old Cotto waxo is that old industry clean floor cleaner and I hate to take this off because I'm afraid at some point this cardboard wax 55 gallon barrel I ain't going to maintain its integrity but it's still two thirds filled with the actual powder and stuff and so you take that throw it on the ground and then that's how they use that's how they used to clean automobile shops and mechanics areas and stuff so you take it and you, you brush it and it brushes up the dust, you brush it all at once. <laughs> it's just one of those, um, this has sat here since before I got here, as far as I know, and I'm not willing to try and move it. Do you, have you used it before and actually use it to sweep yeah. with? Yeah, it'll, put the, it'll, it'll do its job. It absorbs up uh, grease and water, I guess, or any. But it also, because of the friction to it, It'll also dig out, start out the grooves. Okay. 
But it's one of those where you sit, it's one of those things where you sit there, and then I've got all this, all these little old books from 1999, a military review of Wayne County. This will show you everybody that served in Wayne County from 1999 to before then. So you go through here and you can open this up. And here are the photos of Sergeant Isaac Christman. Christman. And it tells you who's a Kentucky Cavalry, 1st Regiment, wounded, Battle of Mill Springs. So you can go through and find all kinds of neat little stuff. You got the old photo. So the stagecoach that would have stopped at, this is an actual picture of the stagecoach that would have stopped at the post office way back when. How about that? Some of those old photos you find and it just, you know, you can't get, everybody's got a camera now, so the world's filled with photos, but as you do it, it'll slowly, and you can see, it's not as evident, evident as you think, but as you move it back and forth, it'll slowly dig out the dirt out of the, to where it does, I mean, it seems silly because you're throwing something to clean up, but it does do its job. It doesn't do it like spick and span or a power washer or something, but it does do what what it says it does. It's, it's you know, that's the way you did it. So that looks like that's probably from the 40s, 50s, 60s, something maybe. Have you ever tried to get a date on that? To no. Can? I, it's, it's one of those cute things that I, I'm a little apprehensive of it, mainly because I'm, I'm just terrified as soon as I open it or as soon as I move it, it falls apart. Just leave it alone, don't you? Yeah, I've had too many things, like I said, with, uh, with the shoe tax, where you find something and you open it, and the next thing you know, the box fell apart. It's just so dehydrated that it can't maintain integrity once you, once you knock it off. But like the old scale, he would have used to weigh, weigh meat. You know, you'd come in here and there'd be a chub or a big old chunk of bologna and he'd just put a finger down and cut you a slice of bologna. So it'd come out, you know, bigger than anything you'd buy now. So when he was raising hogs over here, did you ever hear a number of how many hogs you'd have at a time? Mm -mm. <laughs> I know that when they auctioned the place off, there was a ham that they sold that weighed, that hung there forever, that had hung there for years, that when he put it up, it weighed, it's, they said it started off at 15 or 16 pounds weighed less than two when somebody bought it whether or not they ate it or not i have no clue <laughs> but it dehydrated enough to where it shrunk it, he didn't cut nothing off of it it just shriveled over time right mm. but you sit here and you know if you get up in the attic unfortunately i had to get in the attic crawl space last year when the wind blew because the ripped up part of the roof and in a rainstorm i had to get in and the insulation in this building you know it's a foot and a half deep and it's all that old fine paper it's kind of paper the way they used to do it probably shredded up somehow mm -hmm. and you i mean it it took me quite a while to get it all off me <laughs> but i had to get into the i had to get into the attic to get over to where the roof had blown up to where i could yank it back down secure it to where for the storm to pass but it was one of those things you, i heard something didn't know what it was saw a piece of wood laying in the ground and it <laughs> ripped it up and flipped it up and so for the fact that the roof was still on and the building's as old as it is, it's more impressive than, than that. <laughs> you know, there are little holes and gaps and all kinds of stuff in here. You just can't, you know, I've, I've closed up so many openings that you can't even figure. And there, you know, this is an old, these old pieces of tin where the floor rotted, right? And then they use, you know, license plates. They'd have used whatever they could just to, or whatever was handy to close down a hole. Because I mean this, so this was put on the floor sometime after 1953, I'd assume, because it's a Michigan plate. <laughs> but when mom or the Simpson ladies come in, the, the building being so old, it does leak but they had to put in the structural support to support the floor because otherwise it would have been unsafe to move around and walk. Well, it sounds like you enjoy uh, working here and running the store. I do enjoy it. Sometimes it's a little taxing, but I mean, smoking meat is a 
there's no fast way to do it and so it's time consuming but then again we're only open five days a week you know tuesday through saturday but i'm here year round so it's not just a summertime tourist stop but everything's got its own little foible some of the some of the stuff it's interesting when the weather's weird because you find different stuff when yeah. the wind blows from a different direction i've been upstairs when the wind was blowing and with it blowing it was blowing from the blowing from the north and you could feel the building sway hmm. actually feel the building moving two or three inches and it's you think it's been doing that for a hundred something years it's pretty impressive that it's still here yeah how about that but the fact that it's like this and i ain't never i can't think of my cousins and i fought over who got to eat who got to drink the pickle juice